guys. Recently, John Green of the Vlogbrothers posted a video in which he asked, what does it mean to be human? Thanks for the easy question, John. Jeez. When we ask this question, we tend to grapple with what sets us apart from other animals. Is it consciousness, complex communication, collaboration, empathy, evil? Take your pick. As a developmentalist, I of course think of it like a process. There's no one thing that defines humanness. Rather, it's the continuous interaction of all of these characteristics that are constantly redefined as we take in new information and make new meaning from our everyday experiences and choices. Our brains are built to incorporate new information into existing knowledge very quickly. You could call this learning, and we're biologically built to do this even from before birth, but so are other animals, so maybe learning isn't quite the right word. It's not so much the learning that makes us unique, it's what we do with the learning that might make us stand apart. It's how we make meaning of our experiences and how that meaning shapes our subsequent choices. In that meaning making, your brain connects this experience or this choice with your other experiences and choices and creates an interwoven tapestry that becomes your life. I'm a big proponent of the perspective that we as humans have free will. Our awareness of our potential options and our ability to make choices that shape our lives is empowering. But there's a caveat. Your previous experiences shape your available choices. And I'm not just talking about big life experiences like how getting good grades in school gives you the choice of which top college to go to. I'm talking about those seemingly insignificant choices too, whether to get out of bed at the first alarm or hit the snooze button, whether to walk to school or ride your bike, whether to wear the Star Wars t-shirt or the Doctor Who t-shirt. We make hundreds if not thousands of choices every day. And it's these little choices that subtly shape our lives. And the choices we make one day like staying up too late last night, listening to the podcast Serial, can affect our lives the next, even if it's in seemingly insignificant ways. Being too sleepy at work because I stayed up too late listening to Serial? Ah, good old consequences. Perhaps a better example of this comes from my own background in developmental psychology. Research suggests that children who grow up in physically abusive homes are very attuned to subtle shifts in mood and behavior. In fact, some studies tell us that children who experience physical abuse are actually better at detecting angry facial expressions more quickly than children who are not exposed to abuse. As a result, sometimes children from abusive homes tend to be more hypersensitive to anger and jump to conclusions about other people's intentions being hurtful. They might cower in fear or lash out in anger to something seemingly insignificant to somebody else. This is telling because it suggests that the meaning they've taken from this experience experience is, when his face looks like this, it means he's going to hurt me, so I need to get away. The meaning that they've taken from their experiences is that the world is hostile and unsafe. That perception, which is their reality, shapes their available choices in how to respond. And eventually, some of these choices cease to be choices. They become automatic responses and entrenched behaviors. And until they experience something different and are given a different option, their choices for how to respond will be constrained by that prior experience. To be sure, your genes and biology play a role here too. Your brain's response to new information is shaped by genetics and experience, making both powerful forces in the process of creating options for thought and action. Some people might argue that the rest just comes down to probabilities, that the likelihood of you making certain choices is determined by the meaning that you've constructed from your previous experiences. But then there are those outliers, those statistical improbabilities, those people who despite all our best predictions about how they should respond, break the mold and surprise us by making the unexpected choices. In the case of overcoming extreme hardship, we researchers sometimes call this resilience. But even at its core, resilience is somewhat predictable based on a person's access to certain resources or underlying character traits. The point is that as humans, we have choices. But we have to understand that the availability of those choices is constantly changing with the iterative interaction of genes and experience. In my view, your choices aren't predetermined, but they can also be pretty predictable. If your previous experience has only ever been a very limited understanding of people who are different from you, then your choices for what meaning to make with any new interactions with others are equally limited. But this means we have to be open to learning constantly from one another, to make new meaning, to give ourselves and each other more choices. This perspective could also be applied to breaking down the walls of racism and inequality and politics and gender, you name it. Now I have to warn you, if you're gonna adopt this perspective of openness, 
that it's a really difficult and sometimes painful way to live your life. What you must recognize is that the process is never done. You'll screw up constantly. What you thought you knew is almost always at least a little bit wrong, and you'll never get to be completely right about anything. But to me, that process of constantly seeking to understand complexity and the perpetual discovery about others and myself, that's what makes life worth living. And I would argue, that's what makes us human. End screen! But what do you think? What is it that makes us human? Are we just like animals or are we unique? Tell me your thoughts in comments. And as always, if you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos.